Hello boys and girls, welcome to another video on our YouTube channel. My name is Craig, I'll be your host in this vlog where I discuss and rate a craft beer or any beer for that matter of fact and attempt to repair some consumer electronics good that you might find in the average South African home. Uh, today we're going to rate the uh, Devil's Peak Good Hope Pale Ale I don't know, I'm guessing it's going to fit into style 11B, uh, best bitter. I don't think it's American Pale Ale. I actually, well, maybe. Um, let's see as we go along. Uh, today's a repair that I don't really want to do it I've been putting it off for quite a while now it's uh, a Sinotech TV it belongs to a, a waiter at one of my locals um, and uh, we're going to see how it'll unfold when we when we get to this uh, I've really been putting this repair off uh, the problem with this is uh, Walter lives in uh, one of the uh, townships outside of the city and his uh, his TV stuffed out. We've been having a, a lot of power problems with our power provider, HCOM. And the problem is when the power comes back, the power quality is not great and that destroys electronics, especially cheap electronics. Um, so anyway, Walter took this to one of uh, the repair people in his township and these guys have butchered the board and you'll see when we get on on the bench it is horrible and I've really been putting this off it's one of those repairs I just I don't like to take um really if you bring me something to fix it's great uh, as long as nobody's opened it uh, the problem comes in when somebody's opened it and had a go at fixing it and thrown half the components away then I have to uh, think of it and that yeah it's not uh, not great but anyway let's get the the bench set up and then uh we'll show you what we mean cheers hmm. right so uh here we are on the bench and uh To give you an idea of what we we can see, but I'm using this this point and here is a component missing. That's a capacitor. That's a capacitor. That's a capacitor. That's a capacitor. That's a capacitor missing. I have no idea on the size, and now we have to work work it back. Up here we see a, a little crystal oscillator, and let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. Uh, up there what you can see there's two pads missing there so there was a capacitor that went there uh, that's gone and I have uh, like I said I have no, no idea what the size for these things should be and um, that means I have to do a little bit of reverse engineering a little bit of maths to calc back calculate it to see what the hell we what we should have um, what you can see maybe down here is there's a little voltage regulator and clearly they've been in here and uh, yeah I don't know not the, not the nicest of soldering the only thing that I have done on this board is let's see maybe if we can uh, zoom in up a little bit up there you'll see some of these capacitors like this one that one they've got markings on the side little black markings I've just gone through this with my uh, LCR meter and, and measured the capacitors to see if they're good um, why I've done that let's uh, just come out and give you a whole view of the board these capacitors um, have got a electrolyte in and uh, with temperature because this board gets quite hot it's a video processing board I think they call it a 
maybe a timing control board I'm not sure I'm not I don't particularly care about the TV parlance but what is important to know is you can see these big this this big heat sink here on this uh, video processing uh, chip these things get hot uh, very hot and uh, the electrolyte in these capacitors it either evaporates it melts or it goes away and uh, these capacitors stuff out <laughs> Uh, these capac capacitors are normally uh, it's difficult to see without uh, reverse engineering the, the circuit and I couldn't be bothered to do that either uh, are normally decoupling capacitors or, or bypass capacitors uh, what that means is simply put uh, if there's a DC offset on anything I just either want to pass the AC circuit through or the AC signal through to, to whatever unit or uh, in the case of some of these chips, if this chip starts to draw a lot of power, remember the capacitor uh, stores uh, DC voltage, it doesn't like a change in DC voltage, it will store it and as this thing uh, draws more power then the capacitor will release that power to it. But yeah, like you can see, uh, uh, we'll get a close up when we have to do this later on. Uh, they've pulled the tracks out and um, <laughs> you know it's it's a painful painful repair that I really wouldn't do this normally I would if it, if I didn't feel sorry for Walter I would have just said take your TV and uh, yeah but hey it's a it's a challenge we can do this um, so I'm gonna show you because I don't particularly care about this board I don't, you know, it's it's damaged enough as it is. We can we can fix whatever. Uh, I'm going to set it up and I'm going to show you a few tricks on how we can remove these capacitors uh, quickly. And remember, keep in mind it's because I don't actually care about the board at the moment. So let me get the shot set up and and get the right tools, and then we'll come back to that and. Uh, yeah, let me have a sip of beer because I don't think there's enough beer today for this, but okay. Right, uh, so we're back, we've got it uh, a bit more zoomed in and whatever. Uh, like I said earlier on, I've been through uh, the board with uh, with my LCR meter, which is the inductance, capacitance, resistance meter. If you're ever going to work on uh, uh, TVs, L LEDs, LCD TVs and uh, monitors and things, it's a very good meter to have. So we can see mm, that capacitor I've marked, that one, that one, that one, uh, that one and that one. They're all stuffed, they're not in uh, tolerance, they're either open circuit or they are completely buggered. So I'm going to show you a quick way of removing this. Now, I'm doing this because I don't care about this board anymore. These are surface mount electrolytic uh, capacitors. I don't particularly care about this board. I don't care about what I'm going to do now. Uh, of course, I'm going to be gentle, uh, but uh, just keep in mind, uh, if you're doing it this way, you're going to be putting uh, stress on these uh, little pads underneath here. So what I'm doing is I'm taking a, a stub nose, a crescent a pliers, and all I'm going to do, keeping it parallel and not to put too much stress on this thing, I'm just going to twist it to the side. Remember, keep it parallel and there it goes and there. And it's off. Okay, remember. I'm trying not to put stress on those pads. Of course, we're going to have to clean the pads up. If you don't keep it parallel and you do um, manage to tilt it, you might rip those pads off. Like I say, I don't care about this board. Uh, <laughs> I'm so far gone with this, this, uh, uh, the butchery that went on here. So. I'm going to, uh, we can, I'm going to take the, uh, the other ones off here. Ok, 
okay and then uh, we'll come back in another shot and uh, we'll just show you how we clean up the pad again and we'll take it from there okay we've gone uh, we've gone ahead and uh, removed those capacitors and you can see the blank uh, pads are there um, we're just going to clean it up so I'm just going to show you or I'm going to try and show you how that uh, I'm just going to put a uh, just a little bit of flux down here makes it easier for you to uh, solder. I'm going to take a little bit of solder braid, my soldering iron, uh, we'll just put the braid down on the pad, heat, there you go, nice and clean. Okay, let's do the next one. Remember, gently, you don't want to pull these things off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, clean up all these pads and uh, remove all the faulty capacitors and, and, and stuff and then we'll come back and uh, in the next shot and we'll replace them. Then we'll take uh, the problem further than there. Um, just remember these capacitors that are in here they have uh, different ratings so if you not sure make a, a picture of everything up front and then you know what goes where uh, otherwise draw out a map or something whatever makes it easy for you so let me go ahead and clean all these pads okay boys and girls um yes i've been procrastinating with this um these are all the capacitors i've taken out of that old board these are all faulty. I've tested these for the 10 theta or dissipation factor with my LCR meter. I've also tested them for equivalent series resistance and capacitance. And most of these have lost their, their capacitance by, by at least 50%. So they are useless. What I've gone ahead and done is I've replaced them on the board and I've also replaced a lot of the components, the capacitors that were missing, somebody had taken out. So I'm just going to clear this out the way and get the board shot and then uh, we'll show you there what's what, what we still have to do there. And then hopefully we can actually go on and look for what is really wrong with this board. So let me just get that set up and then we'll be back. Okay, we're back. We've got the board set up. I will not really set up, a, set up for the shot. Um, what you can see is there's a whole bunch of capacitors down here that I've replaced. I'll try and grab a screenshot from... Uh, early on and posted in you can see how bare this board is and you see I've bodged capacitors in here these were all surface mount de devices I didn't have uh, surface mount devices in that side so I use normal through all electrolytics I just bent the, uh, the feet out so all of those the majority of these capacitors down here have been replaced all of these capacitors down here have been replaced we still have one problem Let's see if we can zoom in a little bit and show you what we are seeing. Let's just try and do that. Oh, oops. Uh, there we go. If you see this little pad down here, all this little spot, that capacitor's gone, but what you can actually see is those two pads are missing. So I'm going to have to bodge a capacitor in here. Now there's two ways to do this. Uh, I can either scrape off a little bit of this track here, depending how, it, how strong it is, uh, scrape off some of the, the solder mask, the same for this side, and rebuild this track. But because I'm so negative towards this board as it is, uh, what I can see is that track actually comes up to this leg of that little transistor down there. And the other leg comes to a looks like a, a resistor down here uh, yeah might be a resistor or inductor i'm not sure and we have this uh, crystal in here so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to bodge on a capacitor here i think from looking around this is going to be a 47 microfarad capacitor so we're going to try that and then uh, once i've got that on then we're going to start uh, the real uh, 
uh, fault finding with this board so you just get that in and then we can take it from there what I use to scrape those tracks is I have uh, some very nice uh, uh, scraping tools uh, like they almost look like dentist picks let's see if I can show you uh, one uh, let's see there we go we can get it in let's just uh, zoom out but you don't need to see that like that so what you can see is this uh, hook scraping kit if I bring it down uh, it's got different ends that one's got a nice hook on so it's got a cleaved uh, thing for maybe holding components down if you're soldering and uh, yeah they come in uh, different ends this is just a nice um, sharp end and this is probably what I'll use it's got a little brush on the end for pulling away I'm not going to do this on camera because it's tedious at best so uh, I'm just going to bodge that capacitor in and then we'll be back and, uh, and then we can look at the real problem uh, I can't tell you from my tests that this uh, board you've got these connectors down here on the bottom lower left that I've got the tripod mounted on there's a 5 volt supply that comes in there and my first observation with this board before uh, replacing all these capacitors uh, this board pulls the 5 volt rail down to ground so that tells me there's a short on this board uh, we can see the previous repairer had a go at this 5 volt regulator in here uh, he didn't uh, put it back uh, very neatly or anything so he might have suspected uh, he had a problem and then uh, gave up um, either way We'll get that uh, capacity in up there and then uh, we'll take this regulator out and we'll put 5 volts uh, from my bench power supply into it and what we'll do is we will limit the current to the board so we'll put current in if it pulls the uh, the current uh, that pulls the voltage down then we know we have a short and because we limit the current we're not going to burn the tracks of the board will get hot wherever the short is and we'll ideally and then we will spray some uh, isopropyl alcohol on this and we'll find the short quickly because like I say this board okay boys and girls uh, we're back um, yeah, just to show you what I've done that little uh, capacitor down there you can see I've just scraped a little bit of the track away or the solder mask away Solder the capacitor legs onto the tracks. It's not very strong, it's not going to be at the moment. Uh, uh, what I will do as we go on uh, at a later stage is I will uh, put some uh, UV resist on it. Uh, it's uh, something when you develop a board or whatever that you can put on afterwards. Uh, it creates this green uh, solder mask and that will bond it down and will make it a, a lot stronger so uh, I'm quite happy we've done that I suspect uh, just looking at that res uh, capacitor where it goes uh, it comes to a little resistor down there I actually had a closer look and this forms some sort of uh, uh, RC uh, time timing circuit and it's got to do with uh, that crystal so uh, for that uh, chip yeah you know, I, I suspect that what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna zoom out a bit what you can see is I've got these two leads hooked on here that's a, a low voltage dropout uh, uh, a low dropout voltage regulator um, it's an AZ1084 for those of you playing at home and what I've done in the interim is I've uh, just on one of these connectors down there I've just put four, 5 volt in uh, limiting the current obviously to see if that short is now still there and that short seems to be gone what I've uh, got is my bench power supply is uh, on it's limited to uh, uh, 
one amp uh, at five volts and what we're actually trying to do is we want to see if there's any any shorts on these things so all I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of isopropyl alcohol and you can see I'm just going to spray it liberally on the board we just want to see if anything gets um, if anything gets hot uh, if it starts evaporating then we know something is getting is getting really hot uh, I'm not worried about the isopropyl alcohol shorting out and what I can see on the bench power supply I'm going to set it to well it's running at uh, like I said I've got the, the output voltage limited to 5 volts I've got the current limited to 1 amp and what this thing is actually sitting at is it's sitting at uh, 4.994 so to all intents and purposes it's sitting at 5 volts and the current is sitting at uh, 950 milliamp uh, so it's actually turned on and what we can see uh, if we just look up there again I'm just going to spray that one the low dropout regulator <coughs> slowly slowly what you'll see is it starts evaporating um, it's not hot to the touch the thing that's warm or getting warm is this heat sink on this video processing unit I expect that that's not the end of the world uh, nothing seems to be evaporating very quickly because that's what you would see if the component was shorted you would see this uh, stuff start evaporating rather quickly so in general what I what I do advise if you're going to do this you see I have a, a strap up here let's uh, try and bring that in the shot uh, that's my ESD discharge strap so I'm not going around and touching uh, chips directly because I work on the plush carpets and, and stuff so I have a, a lot of electrostatic uh, electricity in me and that will destroy the uh, chips so if I want to go and tap around on these things I'm just going to put it on my on my hand let's try hopefully well, let's put it on the other hand so it's not going to be in your your camera shot distracting you. So now what I can do is I can actually, if you can see, I've got it round. I I can touch these chips without destroying them, and um, they're not getting hot to the touch. Now remember isopropyl alcohol is not the India pale ale that you would drink um, uh, that's a different alcohol I wouldn't advise you to go around drinking isopropyl alcohol it's uh, uh, quite horrible shit it will it will ruin your day so I'm quite happy the current's dropped a little bit it's now putting uh, 130 milliamp so all in all, uh, the current draw on that 5 volt rail is uh, 130 milliamps at 5 volts, so it's about 460 or 4.6 watts uh, of power. So uh, it's not an out of out of bounds. It's not something that's uh, unusual. So I actually suspect replacing all these capacitors, the ones that were bad, is actually sorted out. What whatever issue we had on this board uh, I think what happened when the and I've sworn this broke out in the township enough uh, this capacitor when he pulled out that pad uh, I suspect he got a big fright because uh, then his clock for this chip would have gone for a loop and uh, and then nothing would have switched on and then uh, uh, maybe not realizing that uh, he gave it all up um, yeah I'm, I'm gonna let the board run like this uh, I want to see 
how hot it gets. I want to see what the, you know, if the draw in increases and, and things like that. So I'm going to let the board run like this for about half an hour to an hour. And if I don't uh, see any magic smoke and see anything uh, leave, uh, blowing up, then uh, what we'll do is we'll put it in the TV and we'll actually have a look from there. Um, these capacitors down here on the right, they are 1,000 volt, uh, 1,000 microfarad, 24, uh, 25 volt. How I worked these capacitor values out, the ones that were missing, I looked at the footprint and I looked at similar capacitors. So the footprint for that one and the footprint for that one up there were the same. Uh, I didn't bother going and doing any maths. Like I said, I was already negative with this board. So what I did is because they were quite common components, you'd notice the, the footprints for the 47 microfarad capacitors, the the, the 100 microfarads, the 22s, etc. They all roughly the same and these guys were quite uniform throughout. So I took a, a gamble and said, okay, well, that footprint was the same as another 47 down here, another 47 up here, whatever. That is going to be a 47 microfarad capacitor. I also looked at over here, uh, it's a similar uh, rating. So that's really how I got to it. It wasn't uh, rocket science or anything. So like I said, I'm going to leave this board to run now for half an hour, an hour. And then, uh, yeah, then we'll, if we don't see any uh, defaults from there, what we'll do is we'll put in the TV and see if it switches on. All right, we'll see you in the next shot. Well, here we are back on the bench, boys and girls. Uh, the system's been uh, running for a few days. And, yep, it's running fine. Looks like everything's uh, is fine, um, except one major cock up. And clearly, uh, I wasn't looking at this properly. What I want you to look at is down here on the left hand uh, corner, you see there's a connector missing that's been pulled out. That's an HDMI connector like that one, like that one. And what you'll notice is all three of these connectors come out with these matched pair signals. And they come to this square over here. Wonderful. Isn't that nice? What is glaring, and you've probably been shouting and swearing at me throughout the whole video, is the integrated circuit, uh, the processor that will go <laughs> over there. So we are now literally stuffed with this board. We cannot proceed any further in the repair. So clearly the guy before me, for whatever reason, decided it would be a good idea to actually take that chip out. I don't know why. <laughs> it's beyond me. The problem is, is we cannot use the HDMI signal with this board because they come up into this processor from either the three and then they come into uh, this processor over here. And yeah, so <laughs> clearly we wasted a lot of time replacing capacitors and this has been a epic fail for repair. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. At least we, uh, we learned a few things along the way. So uh, the only recourse for me now is to, uh, to go ahead and see if I can find on eBay or AliExpress or some Chinese site, if I can find a, a replacement uh, controller board. Uh, the moral of the story is, uh, if you're going to take your electronics to somebody to repair, take it to someone that knows what they're doing. Don't take it to a butcher. I have no idea uh, why the guy took that IC out. Uh, uh, these are not... Uh, these are not uh, common failure points. I mean, that I see if anything is just doing a bit of a uh, multiplexing and demultiplexing. It, it, nothing fancy. Uh. So anyway, I'm sorry. Uh, I can't repair this board anymore from here. I, there's no chance of finding schematics for this. So I wouldn't be able to find out what part number goes in. So that's where we end with this uh, with this uh, repair. Um, I'll set the shot up and then we will review or we'll finish our review with the devil's peak see you in the next one
And so boys and girls, we come to the end of another repair video. Unfortunately, this one was not successful. Uh, moral of the story, take your electronics to somebody that knows what they're doing. Anyway, we've got to finish our a review of the Devil's Peak uh, Pale Ale, Golden Pale Ale, Good Oak Pale Ale. Um, When I looked at this, I thought, well, could it fit into the uh, best bitter 11B style category? And not really. What these guys have done is gone uh, more American with their with their beer, and it's not quite an American pale ale. So the best category I could put this in was. Uh, and uh, the the main style of pale commonwealth beer style 12 and 12 ale uh, 12 a british golden ale um uh, specs on the 12 a um, original gravity 1038 to 1053 ibu 20 to 45 srm 2 to 6 uh final gravity 10 uh, 1006 to 1012 ABV 3.8 to 5 uh, the British uh, the Devil's Peak uh, Golden Ale or Pale Ale comes in at 4% so it fits uh, fits neatly in that uh, the style impressions uh, overall impression of the of the style hop forward average strength uh, pale bitter aroma citrusy American no malt aroma uh, usually a single hop no caramel no diastole appearance uh, straw golden uh, low to moderate head flavor medium to high bitterness hop flavor moderate to uh, moderately high bitterness uh, should be balanced mouthfeel light to medium body low to moderate uh, carb carbonization and uh, the style comparison would be similar to the APA just the British version I think Devil's Peak has hit this with this uh, Pale Ale. It, uh, being 4%, uh, I'm guessing their final gravity is about 1010. That comes down to the mouthfeel. It's not uh, not a dry, dry beer. Um, SRM 2 to 6. Uh, yeah, there might be a little bit on the outside there. IBU 20 to 45, I'm guessing these guys are in the 30 somewhere uh, 28 30 in the IBU um, it's not a it's not much well there's no malt aroma there's a very faint um, hop aroma very faint um, but the taste that I'm getting is you've got this long lasting citrusy bitterness it's um, it goes on and on and on and the only issue I have with that is it becomes a bit uh, a bit grassy afterwards uh, you know it builds up the gas builds up and I think it's probably a little bit highly carbonated as well maybe a little bit too high for the style and that that uh, contributes to that um, um, single hop yes I think so definitely single hop uh, uh, there's no caramel, there's no diastole, there's nothing from the malt. Appearance, it's nice and clear. My glass is just frosted up. Uh, it's nice and winter here, yeah, and I've got the cat TV running in, in the background. For those of you not aware of the cat TV, it's a fireplace, so they, they quite like that. And uh, so my inside room is about 24 degrees Celsius, and outside it's about 4. Uh, I do like the head. Uh, head, uh, it's not fading very quickly. It's lasting. Yeah, nice white head. Not off white. Uh, nice and white. Uh, mouth feel light to medium body. Mm. Oh yes, I know you're watching. Uh, I'm not going to say it's light. I'm going to say it's a, a more light medium, uh, but uh, mouthfeel. 
I think they they finished about one oh one oh on their gravity. So yeah, it's it's got a bit of uh, a bit of body there. Um, for the style, if I compare it to the beer style as as laid out by the BJCB twenty fifteen style guidelines, remember this is what I'm using. I'm going to give them a three point eight. I think for me the technicalities with the beer there's just a, a little bit too much grassiness on the beer it could be that that comes from late hopping I don't know I don't know how the guys at Devil's Peak brew this I have not contacted them in any way or any form to find out but I that typically comes from uh, lay topping and and what you can feel is on the sides of your tongue it builds up and it lasts and it lasts and it lasts it's like a, a layer that builds up and that's the only overpowering thing to me uh, this should be a, a, a balanced beer the, the, the hops should not be too out of line and and that that can really put you off in a little bit with the beer so that's the, the minor flaw so for Star rating, I'm going to give it a 3.8 out of 5. For my drinkability, I'm going to give them a 3.9 out of 5. And it's not because the beer is in any way poorly made. I mean, you could drink this beer. There's no uh, no infections, no nothing, no funny things in it. Again, it comes down to that the grassiness of the, of the hops. It's just... It's too much... And that could be caused, you know, you maybe leave the beer on the, if you're late hopping or dry hopping or something, you leave the beer too much, too long on, on the hops. The guys at Devil's Peak know the game, so, uh, you know, it's up to them to, to figure out what the hell they wanted in the beer. Um, definitely, you know, this is a beer you can go to the bottle store, your, your, your liquor city, uh, and you can buy with confidence and you know you're not going to get a rubbish beer um it's reasonably well it's very well priced for craft beer i think uh, at my liquor city i'm paying i think it was 22 something so it's 23 south african rands for craft beer that i i could quite enjoy i mean i could uh, i could easily sit around a braai with this and have a couple of them i don't think i would be able to drink a excuse me a six pack in a row it's the grassiness is just too much for me but anyway the guys at devil's peak they've done a, a good job with this god get it um it's well worth it um i repeat it i'm sorry it wasn't uh complete uh, uh sometimes you you don't win them all uh, the only step i can take from here is to try and source another timing control uh, video processing board for the tv and then take it from there um, as always if you like what you saw please give us a big thumbs up if not Converse applies to give us a thumbs down um, if you want to get the notifications and, and see when we release new videos please hit the subscribe and uh, the bell notif the notification down below as always take care be safe and we'll see you next time cheers